Welcome in to this week's episode of Your Drum Questions Ain't Your Brought to Drum Launch Academy. I'm your host, Chris B. Love. Today's question slash really topic, the state of play with DJI and specifically, not so much to talk about the 2025 NDAA, we'll talk about that a little bit, but really just the customs kind of status and state of play and really just some stories slash opinions, tidbits that I'll share for my prior life in distribution. So things could change, hopefully for the positive very, very soon. It does feel unfortunate to be negative Nancy, like things are trending negatively when it comes to access to DJI products and our future utilization in the United States. So this is totally in the realm of speculation. I did want to kind of come at this topic because the better part of two plus years in distribution, it kind of ramped up, the heat ramped up even before the 2025 fiscal year NDA act was actually passed. And now that, you know, just to talk on that for just a little bit, we're about, well, less than six months from that date for an appropriate federal agency to undergo the security review. And I think there's even some further legislative action given a 30 day window for a designated. So where all that goes, it's very fluid. Like a lot of this stuff, stay tuned and we'll see. And not just to this show, but there's so much content in this space. People will be reporting on it. So, so stay tuned for that. I want to talk about in this episode, though, is really kind of that buying decision, whether you're first getting started, considering getting started with your drone business, your drone career, or even your drone hobby, kind of what's going on maybe behind that, at least what is known. First things first, and I will put this links in the show notes, a couple links to the DJI Viewpoints blog, a lot of great information there in general from DJI on all manner of topics. I want to specifically call out the one they have published on July 3rd, so about a month ago now. That particular blog post from DJI talking about literally titled Navigating U.S. Customs, Demonstrating DJI's Code to Ethical Production and Labor Practices. So what we're talking about here is the, I'll probably pronounce this wrong, but the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act. And you can read a lot about that online as well. And basically, to summarize everything, that law, and I'm not here to talk about that law, good, bad, or otherwise, if what's being accused is true, I think there's plenty of evidence to that. That's, that's a terrible thing, but that's coming to here and there for this conversation. DJI claims they have nothing to do with that region of China, you know, the materials from that region of China, and their factories are there, so on and so forth. And whether that's true or not, I have no idea. Right? I have personally no clue, no idea. But DJI is insisting they're compliant and are asking well, and other things, how to actually have a, a proper review or vetting or, you know, proper investigation, whatever they need to do, right? Try to be as transparent as possible to restore full access to their products. So a couple of things about that. One, the Drone Advocacy Alliance. Drone Advocacy Alliance is a great resource. Definitely check out their site. We'll put that link in the show notes as well. There's, of course, all manner of state level potential bans and legislation. I'll see some federal action. So great resource. Check it out and make your voice heard in various ways. It's a great place to start. Hopefully many folks in the drone community, I think many have, many thousands, tens of thousands have been contributing to that. So please continue to do so if you haven't been. Check it out on the Drone, Adv drone Advocacy Alliance. But that being said, nothing has really changed in that. And I'll go to my own personal experience coming out of distribution. I left drone distribution in the springtime of this year, 2025. But that early October 2024, our pending shipments all of a sudden were delayed significantly. I'm talking just to get in, into the United States. And then things kind of ramped up and also ramped down from there. Uh, those lead times delayed. When we finally did get shipments, it was a lot in much smaller quantities than we anticipated, and so on and so forth. Just kind of continue that history. And this is my personal experience history. I think a lot of other folks, drone buyers, drone sellers, and others have seen this, but kind of from October 2024 until really it was, it wasn't that we got zero, but we got very small quantities until early 2025. There was a few kind of positive blips of, hey, here's, here's five M350s, you know, here's somebody, this, somebody that. And that's the most confusing part to me in all this is if this, the UFLPA, just make it easier, <laughs> the Uyghur Force Labor Machine. If that's in effect, and that should imperil DJI shipments, well, shouldn't it imperil all DJI shipments? And that's definitely not been the case going back to October. Consumer drones weren't seemingly affected at first, although I'm to be honest, I'm not positive that wasn't just because maybe some of the big box stores and you know Walmart, Best Buy, whoever had so much inventory already that many of those shipments were being held up. It just didn't you didn't see that on the shelves, right? Until months later, but that's certainly possible. I don't know the answer to that. But my point is, whatever's going on with all of that. It's inconsistent, right? So I'm like, hey, if this law is valid, seems reasonable to me, person two cent uneducated opinion, well, then great, they'll block it all. But how can you pick and choose? And it certainly felt like, it seemed like from my perspective, the emphasis on the enterprise line of DJI drones. Also the drones, right? Batteries and payloads are never an issue in my entire time and all DJI accessories 
and looking at even sites now in the summer of 2025, spare props, payloads, like for an empty hundred, three fifty, even the 400, not the aircraft, mind you, but the payloads also be generally blown and available. So to me, just from a kind of a lay person, just observing what's going on, it seems a little bit silly and suspect if this law is meant to be applied to affect change in the world. Again, whether that should or shouldn't happen, whether it's true or not, I don't know. I'm not really trying to get into that in this conversation. It's just, well, shouldn't you either block it all or let it in? This kind of piecemeal, well, some shipments get in, some don't. That just seems very hypocritical and, and silly and definitely raises the question, well, is this even about that at all? Or is this just a convenient avenue to achieve ends that seem to be committed by certain entities, players, agencies to get DJI out some way or another and you can't actually achieve that through a full-on legislative ban. So the point I do kind of wrap that little piece up with saying, I've heard of shipments, substantial shipments, mind you, of even M4Es entering the country from people I know and have talked to in the last 30 to 60 days. So you don't see Mini 4 Pros, for example, brand new on the shelf at Walmart. So yeah, why all this is so inconsistent to me, that's my biggest question. All I know to say about that is I could let off of this whole episode. If you are trying to make these investments either for the first time or a company I work with, my day job, you have older fleet of DJI tools. Maybe it's Band of Fours, maybe it's M3Es. Not that they're particularly old, but you know, if you're looking and saying, "Hey, well, we like, for example, the Matrice Four line ERT, depending on what you're doing, what they can do, or we like the M400 can do, or whatever," it's just a tough time, right? You can't say, "You know what? For my business, I don't need it now, but I might need it next year, or in six months, eighteen months." It's just a little bit of a roulette game of, well, will it be available in those times, right? So. Bottom line, what I'm trying to say with all of this, try to look a little bit of context to folks and say, hey, if you've got the work, I've said this before, actual episode, I think it was 108, with myself and David Young about the executive orders. If you've got the work and are just, should I use DJI or not? Eh. If the tool is going to meet your needs, as I suspect it does for, for most of us, the drone space, if you've got the, the capital to buy it, probably just go ahead and buy it now. We'll have to let the NDAA 2025 chips fall where they may and see what happens. I'll talk about that here in a moment. But if you are like, man, I'm just getting started and I I think a mini three, mini four, whatever would be perfect for me or some of the other consumer stuff. Well, if you can find them and you got the capital guy, I'll get them. If you can't, it's going to be a waiting game to see what, if any viable alternative, especially in that kind of consumer, prosumer, and shelf enterprise, what's going to come along. And it's a little piece of optimism as well. Can't point here in, in summer and say, hey, definitely check this out. Or, oh man, this thing that's promised next month or next quarter. Don't know. There's certainly a lot of things flowing around and I think we'll continue to see, hopefully more entries in that space and, and really some serious entries from the U.S. manufacturers or, I guess, allied countries, if that's a relevant distinction, but in this uh, regulatory environment. So anyway, we'll see where that goes. And I hope to even bring a few folks related to that on this show here in the months to come. So so we'll see. But to the uh, Trump 25 EDA Act really quick, as I mentioned before in the opening to this, that deadline is coming quickly, right? And a lot of information about that, I'll talk about a little bit on this show and different bits and pieces. I'll not really rehash that too much. Minus to say, as a refresher, if you weren't aware, part of the language in last year's, or I guess, well, this year's, but 25 the NDA Act is about an appropriate federal agency has to undergo a comprehensive security review. MTGI's products, as opposed to inquiry, all Chinese drone manufacturers, but we all know DJI's are really focused on. Anyway, if that doesn't occur, the scary provision in that language is it'll just de facto and if they it, DJI's drones will be definitely imperiled as far as getting authorizations for new product releases. We've already seen, obviously, the Mavic 4s, Mavic 4 Pros, not officially released in the United States. So does that mean that the Mini 5s will never make it here and whatever future announcements to come? It seems very likely. And the part that seems most confusing, and this is kind of my last big thing I want to say in this episode, is well, what about all the DJI, the many thousands or tens of thousands plus units that are already in the United States? I don't care if you're a hobbyist, if it's for your business, if it's an old M600, you're still limping along on some old batteries or a brand new 400 or whatever in between. What happens to those drones on December 31st, January 1st, the turnover of 2026? And the ultimate answer is I don't think anyone fully knows. But one of the scary provisions from that standpoint, if you would like to retain access to DJI, I certainly feel that way, is the FCC authorizations. And it's not explicitly clear that existing drones and I should say draw models like an M3E, M4E, whatever, will have their FCC authorization revoked if the appropriate review has not occurred before the deadline, but it may. And the fact that it may is, is disconcerting. But then the question becomes, well, well, what does that mean? And to that, I say, 
no clue. I really don't and hope to tackle that more on this show in the future with some maybe legal experts and others who can weigh in. But my just, again, the layperson thought on that as well. Even if the FCC authorization is revoked for existing models, I could be missing something, but I don't think that would effectively prevent one from still leveraging the tool. I don't think there's like a lockout, like technical ability to lock out a certain model from radio frequencies. Again, I'm not a radio junkie uh, expert or I don't play with him here. We care. It's really cool. I don't, I don't think there's a technical way to do that. So what I'm getting at in all of this is if you've already made these investments, maybe shore up those some accessories and batteries to kind of get you through this period of uncertainty. And again, maybe things resolve for the better in the future over time. Certainly hope so. Fingers crossed for that. If not, I guess the fallback, well, and regardless of any of this, I'm certainly rooting for American major manufacturers to satisfy those needs, right? I feel like in heavy lift, fixed wing, other thing, you know, there, there's some options out there. And I should say casting a wider net, at least non-Chinese manufacturers, I'm not the naming here, but certainly plenty of reference on the show before that I'm a fan of and, and really like the products. But there's just not that small quad category that's so versatile and user-friendly and all the wonderful things we love about EJAS. So, but given enough time, again, fingers crossed, people will hopefully decide to take it on. And maybe, you know, defense is obviously critically important, but also have these more accessible hobby slash prosumer slash entry level enterprise, small and nimble quads. I really want to see that. I think a lot of us do, maybe everybody does in the United States. So, but we're not there yet, right? That's just, those offerings aren't there, at least not commonly in the marketplace. So all that to say, again, we'll reference the viewpoints, a couple of blog posts that I've kind of teased around in this episode. Those will be in the show notes. The Drone Advocacy Alliance webpage will also be in the show notes again. Uh, I've sent some of those notes off to my local representation in Congress, both House and Senate. Uh, admittedly, I think it's always good to try to place phone calls or make it more personal. I'll confess I've mostly done the form letters, try to be personal, and you typically get a form letter response to your form letter, right? So if you make it more personal, more real, and do even more of that, I think that only helps the industry, and, and we'll see where all this goes. So anyway, that'll be a wrap on this week. Basically, some rank punditry and speculation, but again, ultimately encouragement. I don't think we need to be afraid of existing DJI being grounded or taken from you. That just seems like in multiple ways, bridge too far. We won't see that in the United States. But if you don't buy in a certain window, not to play chicken little, the future availability and accessibility from importing and so on, very much in doubt. And so it puts all of us in the drone industry and whatever your particular vertical or focus is, puts us, it's a tough spot, right? You don't want to make investments out of fear. And if you have to wait, you have to wait. If you wait, I think probably continuously, at least till into this year, into next year, maybe beyond for any substantial, like solid clarity one way or the other. We'll definitely stay tuned, keep evaluating that and bring that back up on this show with, with appropriate experts as things unfold. So anyway, with all that, if you got any other questions on this show, please visit yeqa.io, shoot me an email at chris at But until next time, have a great week.